Welcome to Grapple FK, everyone. We are covering Deverson Figueredo against Alex Perez. Uh, this is the headliner for this Saturday night's card. Um, so let's get into this. Deverson Figueredo, um, that's his nickname. Andrew translated it. Apparently means God of War. I knew that, though. I knew. I just didn't know that exactly meant God of War. But 19 and 1, Alex Perez 24 and 5. Alex Perez joined through the Contender Series, if I remember correctly. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, he did. Um, he's an inch taller than Deverson. Um, did Deverson join through the Brazilian Contender Series? I don't think he did, did he? Mm, not sure. I don't no, know. he joined. For, he was at. He was in Jungle Fights, I think. Was he? Was he? Yeah, I think he was in Jungle Fights. But um, yeah, we could we could check that later on. Um, Deverson's got a two and a half inch reach, reach advantage, which which at that height. That's that's quite a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so you know the, the wind breakup. I mean, we, we know what Figueredo does. He's he's got a he's got a, a very very high finish rate for this division. Eighty three percent is ridiculously high for flyweight. And yeah, I mean Perez has got almost a fifty percent finish rate. His average fight time is very short. He's got a few. Decent submissions on his record in the UFC. So does Figueredo, obviously. Significant strikes. It looks like Perez lands a lot more. I kind of get that feeling from his fights as well. Uh, he throws more output, but Figueredo's definitely got the power advantage. I think he's got legitimate one-punch KO power, this dude. Um, and uh, they both have a positive def- differential. Perez apparently has slightly better defense. Grappling, takedown average. Perez is high. I'm not. I'm not surprised. Perez, um, f- for those who don't know, is um, is an all is a, is a former All American collegiate champion in wrestling, in whatever weight he was competing in, one of the lower weights. So that doesn't surprise me. Takedown accuracy is both the same. Um, quite surprising. Takedown defense. Perez is a lot higher. That may. I don't know. That, that that may have to do with... Do, do you think Figueredo maybe lets people take him down sometimes just because he's so good off his back, so good at jiu-jitsu? Uh, I don't think he does. Um, or maybe you've seen some fights where it kind of looks like he's letting them take him down. Yeah. Um, no, um, I, just I don't think, think he's, he's comfortable. Good. I mean, he's, he's good what? at jiu-jitsu. I mean, he's, he's yeah, he's good at jiu-jitsu, yeah. yeah. But I, I think in this fight where we're talking levels here... Yeah. And I think where the one fight where his jujitsu or his ground game let him down was his one loss against Jussier uh, Formiga. Formiga, yeah. Um, Perez is beaten, right? Yes, he has. Yeah. So I think Figueroa's jujitsu, yeah, is good. Um, I mean, he submitted uh, Benavidez, right? Yeah, I mean, he brutally beat him up and then submitted him. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 I I think. (laughs) So it's more about the... uh, yeah, he just beat the, the beating shit out of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but that, that that's an interesting point. Um, which is, which is kind of segue into kind of like the, the main theme of this fight, or one of the main themes yeah. of this fight, which is Alex Perez's way to win, because they both have pathways to victory here. Yeah, the way Alex Perez can win is just by taking him down. Uh, you mentioned his high level uh, wrestling background. Uh, take down actually fifty percent is is not bad. I think a guy bad. like yeah. Alex Perez, he's, he's going to get a takedown. Yeah. Much in the same way that he took down uh, Mark De La Rosa, for yep. example. Um, I think he'll take him down, just wear on him, get some ground and pound potentially. And I think Perez may not get the submission necessarily, but he can win rounds that way. Yeah, I don't think he can because... submit him. Yeah. Sorry? I don't think he'd be able to submit Figueredo. I don't think so either. Um, yeah, but the, the, the reason I'm interested in in that um, in that victory Perez won against uh, Mark De La Rosa is I feel that he could possibly do the same against Figueredo, take him down, get into Figueredo's guard, and just do some damage. Because Figueredo, I'm, I'm trying to remember these different sites because like, they fought the same people. So in Fig- Figueredo's loss, his only loss against Formiga, he was taken down. Uh, he had Formiga in his guard, 
And figure yeah. out he didn't see any defensive jujitsu off his back. He wasn't starting yeah. submissions. He wasn't trying to create space. He just kind of accepted it. Uh, and Formigo just went to work on him and just won by decision. I can see Perez doing the same thing. Yeah, there's definitely a route to victory here. Uh, there for him because he's his, his his wrestling is so high level and his BJJ is pretty good as well. He's got a few a few dis- decent submissions in the UFC, I think including an anad- anaconda choke as well. Um, yeah. So he's he's submitted a few people. Yeah, anaconda choke, two anaconda chokes in a row. One was in the um, what's it called Dana White's Contender Series. Uh, he's got an arm triangle as well. Um, yeah, he beat Formiga, but then he lost to Joseph Benavidez, who um, Davison ruined. So, I mean, you know, MMA math a lot of the time doesn't work, but um, in terms of in terms of the stylistic matchup, I'd definitely give the. Although I think Alex Perez's striking is is good, I'd I'd give the advantage in striking to Davison because he's just so powerful. Um, he doesn't really need to land a whole lot to hurt someone at that weight well let's talk about Fig- figueredo's striking obviously it's about that massive right hand yeah exactly he's yeah. looking for any opportunity to bait you into coming forward so he can hit you as you're coming in and he does yeah. that beautifully Very um, well. he's got beautiful uh, distance management he sees you coming and he'll just move back ever so slightly ever so slightly out of range and make you miss it's beautiful the downside i mean the downside to his striking is that He's, he's literally only trying to throw that big right hand. Yeah. He doesn't even, he doesn't set it up with jabs. He is literally, he's almost like a one-handed fighter, um, which is great when you get the knockout. But if, if it goes to decision, um, he could lose on points. Um, yeah. And Perez yeah, does I have the highest striking differential. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A lot higher. A lot higher. So that's another potential victory, uh, path to victory for, for Perez. Because at some point Figueredo is going to is going to fail to get the knockout, and at some point he's he's going to get outstruck. Yeah, that that that's the question. Can you know, given what what he's been doing recently, um, can Perez get out of that that danger zone essentially? Um, because he is very dangerous. I think yeah, Perez's route to victory would be wearing him down, tiring him out with the takedowns. But I think he has to be careful with the takedowns because, you know, I mean, Deverson has got very high level BJJ. Um, I, so, I think Perez is okay on the ground. Um, it, assuming he, he gets a takedown yeah. on top. If Figueredo gets on top, it could be a different matter. Yeah. But as a wrestler, I, I'm reasonably confident he'll get the takedown and secure a top position. Where I'm worried for for Perez, because you know Perez's uh, striking style is pretty aggressive. He leans heavily on the front leg. He comes forward, head forward, um, which plays exactly into Figueredo's game. Figueredo, yeah. when you come forward into his range, and he just bops you really hard as you're coming in. Yeah, I feel as though they're they're going to clash. Perez likes to engage. Figueredo wants you to come forward. I think if Perez elects to strike he could be in a lot of trouble. Yeah, he'll get finished early, in my opinion, if he does that. He I could think get so, finished too, very right? early, yeah. So I think he has to be very careful. And I think this is the thing, you know, fighters, this is easy for us to, to, to see as observers. Yeah. And it is, honestly, if you know something about MMA, you can pick apart a fighter's game plan pretty easily. You can say, well, he's doing that wrong or he's doing that right. Fighters yeah. and coaches don't always see this. Um, fight you can trust the fighter a lot of the time to have completely the wrong game plan. We I think a not. lot of the times, a lot of the times, a coach does pick up on it, but the fight is just not able to pull it off. But in some yeah. ki- in some cases, they don't have the right game plan. You're right. But there's been multiple scenarios where I've seen a coach say to his fighter, the completely right game cl- game plan, and the fighter has not been able to pull it off. Yes. Um, and it and it depends on a lot of factors. Is the fighter tired? Is, you know, the other fighter is probably better than him technically. He he might feel like um, what's it called? He might feel in danger if he goes for a takedown or um, 
if he changes his style. There's just so many elements to MMA, right? So, um, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it could end up being that Alex Perez, his coach, has lay out the perfect game plan for him and say, you know, go in there and wrestle for a few rounds, get him tired, pummel him. But he might go out there and think, wait a minute, this guy's so quick with the right hand or this guy's moving so well. And before you know it, Figueredo's let off a massive right hand and he's on the ground or some shit. It's, you just never know. As in, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I think, I think in, in terms of wrestling, definitely Alex Perez has the advantage here. I mean, he's an all-American, so his, his wrestling credentials are way higher. I think Figueredo is a 57-kilo uh, Northeast Brazilian champion, uh, which is not a joke. So his, his jiu-jitsu is very, very high level, as we know. Can and, I say that again? Um, he's a Northeast Brazilian 57-kilo uh, jiu-jitsu champion. Yeah, all right, yeah. 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 Um, so basically, the whole of Northeast Brazil. He's, he, he won the uh, he won the gold, fifty seven kilos. Let me look at a map quickly. I just want to see which cities yeah, are in the northeast of Brazil. It's it's a big country, dude, and they mostly do BJJ there because it's called Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So. If it's like the Amazon <laughs> forest, or Amazon rainforest, it doesn't mean a whole lot. I don't think so. I don't think it will be. The Amazon's more to the west, isn't it? Northwest. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just type. You could type it in quickly. Just write in Devers and Yeah, but there aren't, there aren't actually any cities. I I, I know this is like nitpicking. But yeah, there aren't actually any big cities in, in the in the northeast. Um, because all the big cities are on the coast, like Rio, Curitiba, all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so he's he's probably good at jujitsu. He's decent at jujitsu. Um, yeah, yeah, he's that, a black belt. Yeah, he's yeah. a black belt. He's got a few subs. Um, in the UFC. He's got a very good coach. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I just think this guy hits, he just hits one weight division above his power, man. He hits. Yeah, it's remarkable. Power. I mean, flyweights don't have KO power. He's, he's made flyweight exciting. He has. He has. He has. Yeah. It's yeah. just like he could KO someone any minute. It's brilliant. I'm more into the flyweight division now than I was when Henry Cejudo was there yeah because they just weren't when... carrying people it was decisions yeah it was, de it, it was great technical yeah. work don't get me wrong and you know when, when mighty mouse was around as well great technical work amazing combos and you know amazing takedowns and defense but i mean every every, every now and then you want to be a dirty casual and see a knockout right yeah for sure for sure yeah yeah so that's all i want all i want to see is knockouts <laughs> all i want to see is knockouts well, or knockouts are the best, yeah. That's, that's or really submissions, cool. or like really cool submissions. Yes, flying yeah. over platters or something. Yeah, or some shit like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, what 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 are you thinking then? What's what's what getting onto predictions? What are you thinking? I mean, stylistically, we know we've got we've got a wrestler who's also a decent striker against a BJJ guy who's also a decent ish striker, uh, but has a lot more power. I think Figueredo is vulnerable here. Yeah. I'm not saying he shouldn't be a favourite, but I'm saying he's very close. Because if it goes to the ground, it, it, it's just because Perez has won in the same ways that Figueredo has lost. Getting people to the ground, grinding out decisions uh, with Figueredo on his back. I can see yeah. this happening again. Um, but then again, that power... I can also see Perez winning by decision on potentially winning via strikes by decision. But then he does come forward aggressively, which plays perfectly into Figueredo's right hand. So to me, I, I, I honestly don't know. It, to me, it's probably 50-50. Uh, um, and, and what do you think about the... F I mean, this is a five-round fight. Um, what, what, what do you think about that? I don't think any of them have gone five rounds. I was going to ask you what, what you think of Figueredo's cardio. The thing is, I mean, flyweights normally have incredible cardio, right? Um, well, Figueredo's cardio has been criticized. Although I. He's gone three rounds a few times. And of course, he's won, hasn't he? Yeah, well, apart from, uh, apart from the fight against uh, Formiga. 
Yeah, so how many... Can, can so you he's zoom gone, in his wallet? Yeah, he's gone three rounds. One, two, three, three times. And he's won twice. He's won two of them, yeah. Okay, so unanimous decision against Pantoja. He outstruck Pantoja by six strikes. That's a good win. Yeah. Close. Um, Close in terms of strikes. And then a, a split decision against Jared Brooks quite early on in his UFC career where he got outstruck. But how the hell did he win this? He got taken down seven times as well, but he attempted five subs. That looks like a robbery. Yeah, I haven't really seen this fight, but it, reading reading the stats, it kind of looks like a robbery. Yeah. So there, there's another case in point that supports Alex Perez's um, ground game. Yeah. Victory. The thing is, though, Figueroa's never been finished, and Alex Perez has. Mm, That's yeah. what I'm worried about. You got. I wish Benavides I saw that fight where he won the split decision now. Um, I feel like I need to see that. Yeah, I, I, I might watch that fight. Yeah, same here. But I think getting on to predictions, I am leaning slightly more towards Figueredo. Probably 60-40, I'd say, because I just think I just think that he can, at, one, at some point in the fight, get a combo off and hurt him really badly on the feet. Um. um I'm 50-50. If you put a gun to my head, I'd have to pick Figueredo on the basis that Perez does like to engage. Yeah, and Figueredo and Figueredo's, just, yeah. as he comes in, can, can knock him out. And Perez it, has been finished before. Yeah, but it depends on the odds. I think we're going to have to get a little bit clever here in finding where the value yeah. is. Yeah. Well, the odds are, I suspect, Deverson's probably quite a big favorite after that last performance he's got to be yeah i'll tell yeah. you now before we look at the odds i'll tell you now that i've already bet on one of them well i'm assuming you've bet on perez yes yeah not necessarily yeah. because i think he's gonna win it's it's, but... it's it's a good bit but he's a good it's a good bet because i'm he's probably i, I don't know i'm guessing plus 200 ish or something yeah, what odds did I get for him? Uh, let me have a look. Also, I should mention, actually, I think I think Perez got finished by Benavides. I think there were some there were some illegal shots in there by Benavides. He was on the ground and he was hitting him on the back of the head. If if I'm remembering this as it happened, mm. um. But still, he did get finished. He did get put in a position where he got finished. Um, that was quite, 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 quite a while back. But it's something to know. But th- this is an interesting fight, and I think, I think you've hit the nail on the head, Andrew. In that this is, I think this is closer than what people think it is. I think a lot of people are thinking Figueredo is going to go out there and like KO him in round one. Yeah, it is yeah. closer than people think. Yeah. Bear in mind, in that fight against, um, can you get those? Let me look at those stats again. Um, well, for Alex Perez, no, against uh, Benavides. Uh, for Alex yeah, Perez, so in the first mean? figure in the first Benavides fight, yeah, he was outstruck before the KO pretty badly. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. So, he, so yeah, he was losing that fight and, until he. Did his thing and and ended yeah, it. it's just he's just so dangerous. He's just got such a high finish rate. Like Tim Elliott was on uh, out out striking him as well, um, you know, over three to one, and then he just subbed him. Um, yeah, but but you can see the vulnerability there if he's getting out struck and it. Yeah, that doesn't it's happen. It, it's just it's just because he's been looking so lethal in his last three or four fights. Um, he he seems to be getting more dangerous as he progresses uh yeah but it's only earlier this year when he was outstruck by benavides um these numbers don't lie yeah but um, he still got finished dude that's the thing yeah but it's, yeah yes but, but yeah it's, that's not going to happen every single fight probably no probably not but so it's I, happening i'm not saying for 83 83 percent of the time um yeah. I'm not saying so, Figueroa won't get the KO, but it's not 
it's not a guarantee. No, it's not a guarantee. No, no. I, I think, and I, and I think a lot of people are, have miscalculated this, and that they, they they haven't really studied what they haven't studied Alex Perez's background. Like, you know, I can guarantee you, 80, 90 percent of people will not know he's an All American. They probably don't even know that weight division in 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 wrestling exists. The fifty, whatever, sixty-ish kilo weight division, the really low weights. So. I mean, him being an All-American state champion, that, that's a huge thing. That's a huge thing. It's a big thing. It's a big thing. Yeah, yeah. it is. Um, but, but which state was it? I can't, I can't remember. But I mean, Amer- America, obviously, you know, some states are better than other states for wrestling. But America is a wrestling nation. So yeah. if, you're, if you're a state champion, you're going to be at some kind of level. It's like saying Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Northeast champion or whatever, Southeast champion in Brazil. You you have to be a certain level to get that. If that's the national sport, if that's the national combat sport. Yeah, true, true. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, let's look at these odds, Waleed. So Figueiredo, yeah. what do you think the odds are for Figueiredo? I don't know. Minus 200-ish, minus 215 or something like that. I don't know. Close. Not minus 300. Not that close, actually, but yeah, m- minus three hundred. So he's a, he's a big, big favorite. He's he's a big favorite. Shit, yeah. Perez is a plus two forty underdog. So when I saw those odds, I, I said, "Yeah, fuck that. I'm, I'm betting on Perez just for the value." And if you think this is a fifty fifty fight, there's a lot of value on Perez. A lot. Um, oh yeah, if you think this is a fifty fifty fight, that's a huge gap. Yeah, or even 55, yeah. 60, 40 fight in favor of Figueroa. Yeah. There's, there's value. Yeah, there. I, I think this is a 60, 40 fight. And, you know, there's, 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 there's room for me there to bet on him too. So. Yeah. Um, because saw, those, saw, those odds imply that Figueroa wins. Well, yeah, I mean, there won't be much value for me, but. Um, well, the, the, the odds on Perez implies that he wins 29.4% of the time. Yeah, so the, yeah. Uh, There's about 10%-ish value for me. About 20-ish, 20-ish for you. Um, so Figueredo is a 76.9% probability, implied probability. Yeah, of winning. yeah I mean... So, sorry, say that again? 76. 76.9. Yeah, so about 16%. Well, that's not bad. That's not bad. I mean, I I wouldn't put Figueredo in a gum gum. I would put him in the risky gum gum. For me, it's probably borderline if it's the risky gum gum. No, I I no. For me, not the risky gum gum. Not saying he can't win. He can. He can definitely win for sure. I think this is just slightly too close. Yeah, I, I'm probably going to put him in the risky com com. I'm not going to put him in the safe com com. I think it's too. I'm not comfortable enough with it to put him in the safe one. I'm also thinking the value. I can be clever by betting on Perez and betting on a Figueredo KO. Yeah, what what are the what are the odds for Figueroa KO? Uh, let's have a look. They're not going to be great. <laughs> Minus one twenty. Yeah. So not great, no. Yeah, they're not great. So I don't think there's much scope there. What about the odds of the fight going to decision? They might be good. Uh. Will the fight go the distance? Yes. Eleven to four. That's not plus two seven five. It's not. Yeah, we got to. Yeah, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. It's 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 hard to. I think I think I've, I will put Figueroa in the in in the risky come come. Actually, plus two seven five for fight to go the distance. Bear in mind that's probably how Alex Perez would win. Those yeah. odds are better than a Perez win. So I might just cash out of my Perez bet 
and bet on the fight going to the going to distance. Yeah, that's better for you. Yeah, that yeah. is better for me. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so there's there, there's a few things we can look at here. Over uh, two and a half rounds going the distance, um, a KO for Figueredo, a sub for Figueredo. I wonder what sub for Perez is. Can Perez sub him? That's the question. Probably not, but he has subbed a few people. Let's have a look. I think it's 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 a long shot. It's a long shot. Oh wow, you're gonna like this. Fourteen to one. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's good. <laughs> yeah, that's very good. That is pretty I might good. Just put a pound on, so that's plus one thousand four hundred. Yeah, I might just put a pound on that. Yeah, just put a pound on for you. <laughs> <laughs> great, those are great odds. I'm, I'm going to take. Them. Yeah, yeah, they are, they are. But um, yeah, that's it. Anything else you want to mention? No, other than the fact that I think Davis and Figueredo. As good as he is, is not going to be one of these champions who is holding the belt forever, like John Jones or Usman or Demetrius Johnson. I think he's vulnerable. Yeah, he's vulnerable, and no one really cares about flight weight anyway. So who gives a fuck? Wow. Although it's getting slightly better now. It it is more exciting. I mean, here we are talking yeah. about it, and we're obviously interested in this fight. I, I would like him to just. I would like to see him just KOing flyweights. That's why it's interesting for me. Mm. I just. So so we're actually we should quickly mention that it, it 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 was supposed to be Cody that was going down to fight him for the belt, but he got pulled out for whatever reason, and then Alex Perez took his spot. Isn't Cody Garbrandt like five seven or five eight or something? Yeah, I don't know how he would make that weight, dude. He he wouldn't. That's probably why I pulled out. I realized you'd have to die. I mean, TJ yeah, Dillashaw, yeah. TJ Dillashaw went down to flyweight and nearly died. And like, and and my man was on serious Mexican meat too. Yeah, he's on EPO, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Because he was so drained. Yeah. Yeah. What well, what is one two five pounds in kilos? That's fifty six 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 sixty. About sure? 60, approx 60, uh, 58, 58 probably. Let's have a look. Uh, 125 pounds to kg. 56.7. Fuck, I was... Yeah, I was 1.3 kilos off. So 56.7, that's... <laughs> wow. For someone who's 5'7", five, 5'8", five, that would be difficult. Yeah, definitely. That would be difficult. Fuck, people actually weigh that. It's ridiculous. Yep. All right. Well, uh, there you mm. go, folks. Uh, I've got, I think, Figueredo. I've got Figueredo 60 to 40. I think Figueredo, if I'm going for a prediction, I think he'll probably KO him. Probably KO Perez and let's say... I'm going with second round. I think this is a this is a fifty fifty fight. I think the value lies with Alex Perez, and through our investigation, yep, I agree with that. The value lies in probably the fight going to the distance, um, with Perez winning. But if we go to the distance, then opens the door for also Figueredo winning. So that's probably sensible. If you put a gun to my head, I would say Figueredo wins by KO, first round. First round, well, wow. well, I've, I've got to pick a round. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, if, if Figueroa's got going to win, it's because Perez is too aggressive, and he gets caught coming in. Whether that's the first round or the second round, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's first or second. Yeah. Well, there have it, guys. Uh, we will be covering a few more fights very, very soon. So stay tuned for that. And thank you for watching. Please do like the videos and please subscribe. Leave us if, leave us any comments and we'll get back to you. If we haven't spotted anything, let's all collaborate and get the betting going. Um, take care and uh, have a good night or evening, morning, wherever you are. Take care. Bye. Bye.